I know this is not easy, picking up and moving all the way across the country, okay? But this is gonna be good for us. Maybe for you, how could this be good for me? You're just running from the world. And all of this packing up and moving to Oregon, it's all on you. See, this isn't so bad, is it? What is that? Check your phone. I'll check it to see if it'll turn on. I had a lot of charge this morning. Watch, it's dead too. No, it's an electromagnetic pulse. Primarily, they're used as weapons. A weapon? I've made up my mind we're staying here, and that is final. You might want to stay here tonight, but this kid is going for help. I can't stay here. Dylan! You knew I didn't want to be here with you, but you didn't listen to me. The more I'm with you, the more I hate you. Oh, get up. Lean back. Lean back. Oh, what is it? What is it? Oh, my gosh. Some kind of an animal. Crap. Rachel, it's open. What is wrong? The camper was broken into, Dad. They took my other gun. Not to complain or anything, but this bed is not comfortable. <laughs> oh man, what a night. <sighs> Breakfast of champions, right? Man, I cannot wait in Davenport to get me some eggs, bacon, and grits. Oh, and some coffee. Mm hmm. I bet you didn't know I like coffee. There's a lot of stuff you don't know about me. That's okay. Well, last night I dreamt that I was running from this massive trap. <laughs> exactly like the one that got you. Whew, man. I was running through the woods and it just chased me all the way back to the camper. And somehow this camper made me feel safe. And I climbed up in that bunk and then it just started eating its way through the whole thing. I thought I was a goner and then finally woke up. So. <sighs> How long do you think it'll take us to get to Davenport? Dad. You've been listening to me. Are you even awake? Dad, come on, get up. Dad? Dad, wake up. Oh no, you're burning up. Oh no. Oh no, Dad. Dad, no, please, no, 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 no. Dad, you need to drink something now. I'm sorry, Dad. For a second. Dad, 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 don't do this to me. Please tell me you're just kidding. Dad, please get up. I don't know, I don't know what to do. Why, 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 why wouldn't I listen to you? I don't know, I don't know. Please get up, Dad. I need, I need you to teach me how to use one of these things again. You said we're here. There's the 
fishing pond the world became. I'm sorry for not listening to you. Just please get up, Dad. I can't do this without you. I need to go get help. Dad, I know the other day I told you that I, that I hate you. I did, I didn't mean it, okay? Just hang tight, okay? I'll be back soon. The seas are wide along And I can't swim over And neither love Now that is one fine bean right there <laughs> Hmm Hello? Anybody there? Well, good morning, young fella. Rejoice, rejoice, for today is the day the good Lord has made. Would you like some coffee? Say, didn't I see you a couple of days ago? I was wondering if you could help me. Uh, help you what? My dad. Your dad, that's it, your dad. I talked to your dad a couple of days ago. The uh, house on wheels, right? Is that right? Yeah. Yeah, never forget a face. <laughs> Listen, I, I just, I wanted to see if you could help. Help you how? My dad, he's really sick. He's sick, you say? Well, why didn't you say so? Come on, boy, don't just stand around. Help me get my stuff packed up. Shake a leg. Boy, it does look like it's gonna rain. Mm -mm -mm. Do you know the two rainiest cities in the United States? Pensacola and Mobile. Gee. We'll grab something, yeah. So you and your father, uh, where were you guys going? We were going to Oregon. Oregon, oh God. Now that is a beautiful place. You know, I've been to Oregon a number of times in my travels. Although, I must say it's been a couple of years since I was there. So what's in Oregon? Nothing. Nothing? <laughs> you know, I have, I have been to Oregon and I can absolutely tell you that there is something there. My dad, he just, he has this idea that we're just gonna... Yeah, I'm, I don't wanna talk about it. Oh, well, talk or don't talk, I don't mind. But I am a talker, always have been. In fact, my own mother said once, that, uh, well, several times, that I could talk the hind legs off a donkey. You can imagine that. Now, that's a pretty peculiar phrase, isn't it? Talk the hind legs off a donkey? Hmm. But you know, I met a man once from Ireland, the Emerald Isle, and he told me that that phrase actually means to be able to talk so much that you could bore a donkey into sitting down on his rear end. Fascinating. Well, that's because donkeys don't normally sit down. You ever see a donkey sit down? I know I haven't. <laughs> You know, I think you and my dad are gonna get along just, just fine. Hmm. And so that is the reason that not a whole lot is known about that. And another thing that a lot Stop of right folks there. don't know. Oh my. Are you alone? Are you alone? Yes, we are alone. 
You're sure? Yes, it's just us. Your bags. Drop them on the ground in front of you. A and open them. Listen, lady, we don't have time for this. Oh, my dad, he needs my help. Uh, just do it. <sighs> open them wide enough for me to see inside. Who do we have back there? I told you to stay hidden. <gasps> I don't think so. Look, I don't want to hurt you. I really don't. But I will use this if I have to. So just don't do anything stupid, okay? Do you have any food in there? Some. All your food, water, medical supplies, put it in the bag. Listen, lady, you can take whatever you want. Take all of our food, I don't care. But this right here, I need this, please. It might help my dad. <laughs> I don't think you're in any position to be bargaining right now. My dad, he's sick. I need this. I'm sorry about your dad. I really am. But we all have our problems right now, okay? Just put it in the bag. Let her have it. We don't need it. My dad. Son, you cannot help your dad if you're dead. So, let it go. Let her have it. Take the rest of your stuff and get out of here. Go! He's right in here. Anything to drink? Any water? I tried. It's probably dehydrated too. Oh boy, that is infected. When did this happen? A couple of days ago. Is there anything you can do? Oh boy, his heart's beating like a trip hammer. No, there's. I'm afraid, son, there's not much I can do. I'm not a doctor. I don't, I don't have any idea what really ails him. And if they, even if I did, I, I wouldn't know how to treat it. So there's nothing you can do? No, I can't help him, but I do know who can. Who? Do you have faith? Faith? Yes, faith. Do you, do you believe in God? I think so. Sure. Well then join me and we'll pray for your father. We're gonna pray? What, what good could that do for him? By his wounds we are healed. that? That is oil that came all the way from the Holy Land. Oil? See, the book of James tells us to pray over the sick and to anoint them with oil in the name of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And pray to me, he will raise them up. Firstborn from the dead, the great physician, the one who can, and we pray will raise you up. Lord Jesus, we come to you today in complete surrender. This man, this father, is very sick and is desperately in need of your healing touch. We come to you fully acknowledging our limitations. Our hands are tied and we are powerless to help him. 
and yet we have faith. We believe and are ready to stand in awe of what you can and we pray will do here in this place. Today we humbly ask you that as you healed all those who came before you when you walked among us, that you will restore this man's health and heal his wounds. And we ask these things in your holy name. Amen. Praise be, this just never gets old. Ow. As I said, all things are possible to those who believe. What's going on? Well, I would offer you more if we could, but Somebody broke into the camper a couple of days ago. <laughs> we don't have everything we started with. Well, I wouldn't actually say that it broke in. It was more of they walked in, opened the camper door, and helped themselves. That was my fault. So, gentlemen, I'm still trying to wrap my head around what happened this morning. Was I that sick? Yeah, you were that sick. I don't remember much. I remember going to bed last night feeling warm, but I just figured it was the temperature inside the camper. Well, you were sick, real sick. In fact, you were nearly dead. But the good Lord, he saw fit to bring you back. Nothing short of a miracle, you know? Miracle, huh? Yep. I know a lot of people don't like to think about miracles or believe in them anymore, but how else can you explain it? I think it was a genuine, plain as a nose on your face miracle. I'll take it. You know, this fish is good. I haven't had fish in a while. Yeah, we caught it from a pond nearby. There's plenty of fish there. Mm -hmm. I'll have to check it out next time I'm around. So you guys have been stuck out here ever since the event, huh? Yes, sir. So you experienced it too? Oh yeah. I'm hoping it's just local to this area. Well, I wouldn't bet on that. Why? Well, I, I ran into a couple of people out from Jackson yesterday on horseback of all things. And they said that the power was out all the way from Mill Creek. Mill Creek? No. What was it called? Cedar Creek. Cedar Creek all the way out to North Valley. Really? Yeah. And uh, they said that they had heard that the power was out in some of the bigger cities like Chicago and Minneapolis. Chicago, that's, that's where we're from. Mm -hmm. Well, I mean, that's, uh, that's only what I've heard. I mean, it's hearsay, that's all I know. But uh, it ain't looking too good out there. Why? Those folks that I met, they said they had left because of people starting to panic already, even in small towns like Jackson and, and Davenport. And they left because of all the rioting and the looting that had started. They said a lot of other folk were doing the same thing. Rioting? Mm-hmm. I guess some folks are out there looking for answers, and others are just looking out for themselves. Makes sense. If the power is out on a wide scale, that means there's no communications at all. No internet, no radio, no television. And if there's no power, there's no way for people to buy and sell things if they're paying electronically. So people are doing what they have to do just to survive. Yep, sure seems that way. You know, you seem to know an awful lot about this stuff. He was an FBI agent. A fed, huh? Yes, sir. Uh -huh. So what'd you do in the FBI? Well, before I retired, I was part of a threat analysis team. It was our job to dream up in-game scenarios. In-game scenarios? 
yeah, you know, end of the world type stuff. Hmm. I never heard that. You mean the stuff like in uh, the book of Revelations, huh? Exactly like that. It was our job to assess the best and worst case scenarios in each one of those situations. And not to sound like a conspiracy nut, but what I learned scared me. It's one of the reasons I decided that me and my son needed to change the way we live. The longer I worked on that team and learned about those scenarios, the more I learned that the world that we live in is very fragile. We're all relying on someone else, the system, to survive day to day. And it doesn't take much for that system to break down, leaving us all incapable of surviving. That's why my son and I were on our way to Oregon. He's trying to find a, a place far away from big towns and big cities. So that when that system fails, as it seems to have recently done, we'd have a better chance. Dad, I'm glad we're not in Chicago anymore. I'm glad I'm here with you. Thank you, son. Those end games include things like mass terror attacks, nuclear war, nuclear reactor breakdowns, contagions, pandemics, or if my assumption is correct in this situation, EMPs, an electromagnetic pulse. If that's what we're going through, if one of those has been detonated at a high altitude, it would do exactly what you're telling me. We would lose mass communications across the grid. And if that's what we're going through, to get back to your reference to the Bible, God help us. I'll see him into that. Are you sure you won't stay with us till tomorrow? We decided to head back to Chicago. You are more than welcome to join us. Well, I thank you for your kind offer, but I have another road to walk. Fair enough. You see, I'm a servant of the Most High. My hands are his hands, my feet are his feet. I go where he leads and I do as he wills. I can do no more, nor will I do less. Well, we wish you well, and I thank you sincerely for everything. And may God always be at your side. And you, young fella, never forget what you saw here today. Hang on to that, because today you witnessed the Lord God in action. And if you remember that always, you'll never lose your way. So I'll be seeing you. <laughs> Thanks again. <laughs> Take care. You know, we never even got his name. So, here you got taken by a girl? She was a woman. Mm. And she had a gun. Let's get packed. Dad, do you believe in God? Yeah. I believe. Why? For some reason, I've, I've, I think I've been mad at him. And mad at you, too. I sort of sensed that. And it's not that I've meant to. It just kind of happened. And I, I can't control it. Anger and hate are like that, son. They sort of creep in, and before you know it, they're kind of making decisions for you. Yeah, it's just like that. But today, when I almost lost you, I just wish Mom could be here. I miss her so much. I 
Bitte Tüße. You know I loved your mother with all my heart, right? Yeah. But why did you have to leave us? Dylan, when your mother and I separated, it was supposed to be for a very short time. We both talked about it and we both agreed that we needed space. I definitely needed my space. I was in a bad way. I, I tried to hide it from you and I think your mom did too, but I had started drinking. Everything had just become too much for me. So I moved in with Pops. And it was only supposed to be for a short while until I got over that. If you were there, you could have stopped that man from hurting Mom. I know, son. And I have to live with that every day of my life. I battle those demons every morning when I wake up. The what ifs and the regret. Dylan. Dylan, every time I think about your mother, I am this close to going right over the edge. But I have to force myself to stop. You know why? Because I still have you. You and your pops were right. I had been running away from everything my entire life. I, I just feel like isolation is what I need. Like the further I get away from, from everybody, the better I'm going to be. That's why we were going to Oregon. Because I felt like the further I could get us both away from everything and everybody, the safer we'd be. I love you, son. And deep down, I was just trying to protect you. I love you too, Dad. It's your mom's Bible. Perfect love casts out all fear. That was her favorite verse. I remember. She told me one time that when she was a little girl, she would look under her bed and check her closet before she would go to sleep at night. But even after checking, she'd still have to sleep with the lights on. Then Grandma gave her this Bible and told her that fear just robs us of our peace and stops us from living. Your mom told me that story on our second date. And she would always say that God's perfect love can cast out fear. Dad, I need some of that love. Because I'm scared. I am too. What if things are as bad as that old man said? Then we need to try to live like your mother lived. Going away fear and focusing on faith. I think maybe your mom would want us to pray right now. You want to give it a try? Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. 
Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. How much longer do you think till we get there? If the power is out on a mass scale, maybe two weeks on foot. I sure do hope Pops is okay. I'm worried about him too. Your Pops is a tough bird. We'll find him, he'll be fine. Hey, watch out for any traps. I will. We definitely don't need any more accidents. Besides, we got nowhere to return to. Especially if that log doesn't work. <laughs> yeah. nothing. Look, we've made pretty good time. Do you want to stop and rest? No, I think we should just keep going until lunchtime. Okay. Dad, when that woman pulled a gun out on me, I just felt defenseless and weak. And I, I want you to teach me how to use a gun, just in case. All right, now remember, there's gonna be a little bit of kick. You nervous? Yeah, a little. Well, that's good, because you never wanna use a gun unless you absolutely have to. If it is the last option, then you would pull it out, okay? Now, that being said, see those cans? They are very, very bad. They are a threat to us today, and I want you to take them out. Make their day. You got this. Everything we talked about. <laughs> that was a good try. Let's try it again. Come on. You got it. You got it. <laughs> okay. That's... I, I can't do this, Dad. This is so stupid. You can do this. If you say you can't, you can't. But you can, all right? Now look. Grip it. Raise it up to the target. Put it over the top of the barrel. Line up the sights. Focus. And don't forget to breathe. Nice! Good shot! See, you can do it. Now let's take out his friends. Okay. You got this. Same thing. It's okay. You got it. Try it one more time. Slowly raise it up. Same thing. Be careful. Look at you. You're a natural. About another hour and a half, we should run into another pond, which will be good. Two days with cereal and crackers. I'm ready for some protein. Hopefully we can find some more fish. What? You don't like all the yummy snacks we have? Hey, you could have took my eye out. <laughs> Okay, pond should be right over this hill. Hey, what do you say when an alien makes a phone call? I don't know. Something's on the line. I don't get it. Something is on the line. Oh. <laughs> Get her in. Let's go. Oh my gosh, it's big. Oh. Oh, that is a big one. Gosh. Nice. Sweet. We are not alone out here. I found this nearby. 
We head out? No, I think we should stay here tonight. We'll head out first light tomorrow. Besides, we can alternate watch tonight now that you're a regular Frank North. Who? Frank North. Arguably one of the best gunslingers in the Wild West. He could hit the edge of an envelope from 10 paces. That's almost 25 feet with all six bullets. How'd you know that? Like I said, you can learn a lot when you're on three-day stakeouts for the FBI. Hey, looks like they're almost done. Smells good. So do you think we're safe out here? Let's hang on to what the old man said. As long as we believe in God, he's got our back. There you are. Where have you been? I thought I would do a little more scouting. You are never going to believe what I found. That's her, Dad. That's the girl who took my stuff. I think they've been following us. I thought I saw somebody yesterday. Why, though? I don't know. Well, just be aware, Dad, they have a gun. I mean this. I snuck in there and took it a while ago. It's mine from the camper. So it was them? Yes, sir. Let's go back in there and get our stuff back. No, 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 no. I've got a better idea. Morning. I know what you're thinking. No need to panic. I just thought you both could use a nice meal before you start the day. Looks like it's gonna be a nice one. I hope you like fish. What do you want? I don't want anything. I just wanted to do something nice for you. I think you know my son, Dylan? Is that what this is all about? Look, I'm sorry about the other day. Take your stuff, take whatever you want. Just please leave us alone. You looking for this? I already took it back. We don't need any accidents today. Fish is ready. It's okay. We caught these fish this morning. There's a pond nearby. It's safe, I promise. For both of you. Please. Why are you doing this? Like I said, I just wanted to be nice. Looks like you've had a rough couple of days. The power went out in Davenport, which is where we're from. People just went crazy. They were stealing and Looting and so much gunfire and kind of like you yesterday. That was different. I didn't shoot. Well, it sure didn't feel different to me because you had a gun and you could have killed me. Things got bad so fast. I barely had any time to pack. We only had a small amount of food and a couple of water bottles and it barely lasted us two days. We were hungry. I have to take care of Poppy. Then my theory is correct. You are a very good person stuck in a very bad situation. That's it. Why were you following us, though? Dad, I already told you why. It's when our backs were turned, they could take all of our stuff. Look, Let her answer. I understand you not trusting us. You have to believe me. Like, I felt so bad the other day when I took your stop. I never pointed a gun at anyone before. I don't even know how to shoot one. You could have fooled me. Look, I'm sorry. The reason why we were following you is I, I was just hoping you might be able to lead us to safety somewhere. Well, we're headed back to our hometown of Chicago. We don't know what we'll find there, but we've talked about it and we would like to ask you both to come with us. 
What? Dad, she didn't even let me have a small med kit Della, to help you. Please, go get the cooler and calm down. I'm sorry. We don't have much, but we're willing to share what we've got. There are plenty of rivers, streams, and ponds between here and Chicago, so we'll have plenty of fish. Dylan and I both know how to use guns, so if we run into trouble, we'll be able to take care of it. No tricks? No tricks. Well, what about your son? I mean, can I trust him? He's a good kid. You can trust him. Right, son? Rachel. My name's Rachel, and this is Poppy. It's nice to meet you, Rachel. Poppy, my name's Brock. And again, this is Dylan. Why don't you guys finish eating? Let's get things together, and we'll head out soon. Still don't understand why you're doing this. Thank you. Both of you. Dylan's mom once told me that the world is a better place when everybody treats each other like they would like to be treated. Golden rule. My dad used to tell me that too. Well, let's do the best we can to make the world a better place in these trying times for them. That sounds good. Poppy, what grade are you in? Second. Second grade. What's your favorite subject in school? Arts and music. Ah, nice. Sure is a day of gloominess and thick clouds and heavy black darkness. But he has shown you out of the darkness and into his wondrous light.